Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Today I want to break down what a mix template is, what I put in my mix template, and how you can build one yourself. Why have a mix template? This will help you mix faster. This will help you mix more consistently so that your mixes sound more consistent every single time you mix. And it's more fun. It really, really is more fun. So the idea is if you mix with clients or mix for clients, if you have a good template, you can get through your mixes faster, which means you can get done faster, which means you can get paid faster. You can make more money in the same amount of time. Your clients will love you because you're you're churning out consistent mixes every time. Even if you just mix for yourself, you're gonna be able to create more consistency so that your mixes aren't all over the place, which I hated that with my mixes. They were all over the place in the early years. And it's just more fun to have a workflow that's a lot more akin to the way we mixed on consoles where we had the same kind of rack gear, the same console settings. There was a sense of uniformity, not in a bad way, because every song is different, but a sense of consistent uniformity from songs coming out of our studio because they all went through our similar gear. We're not just changing it up every single song. So let me explain how this works. I'm working in Pro Tools. If you're not a Pro Tools person, please do not tune out. I'm not gonna be talking about Pro Tools specific stuff. I'm talking about the concept of a mixed template and how you create one for your own DAW. I understand that many of you are working in many different DAWs. That's why I wanted to show you the concept so you can go do it yourself. Here's what you wanna do. If you don't already have a great mix that you love that you could pull from, here's how you build a template from scratch. Create a new session or a new project file or a new song file, however your DAW calls it. I've got a blank Pro Tools session here. And we want to create a few elements to our template. Let's start with the master fader. So I'm going to create a stereo master fader here. And I'm going to flip over to the mix view. And this is going to be obviously where everything dumps through. So if you put plugins on your master fader, and I highly suggest you do if you follow my top-down mixing approach, just look for any videos of mine with the words top-down mixing. Mix bus processing is helpful. It's so, so helpful. So if you have some go-to plugins, you can put them on here. Now, I'm going to use stock plugins and Pro Tools to show you how you could do this with stock plugins. It doesn't really matter, but if you have your favorites, insert them here. I generally like a compressor, so I'm going to grab the stock Pro Tools compressor here. And what you'd want to do is find a setting that you generally like. On mix bus compression, I generally want a 10 millisecond or slower attack. I generally want the fastest release that it'll give me. I generally want a two to one ratio. Uh, if it's really aggressive rock, I might go four to one. Uh, and then I really want to keep the threshold pretty high. Um, and I'm going to have to adjust the threshold anytime on a compressor to my mix because I really only want it to capture a little bit of the peaks, okay? So I would start with something like that, and that'll be my compressor. Then I like to grab an EQ, uh, and I don't know exactly what I'll do with the EQ, but I will probably do something like a high pass filter on the ultra lows, just to roll off some ultra low end. And I typically, again, I'm just making sweeping generalizations here, typically have a some kind of low mid cut around 400 hertz. So I'm going to pull out just a little bit here. Uh, and on the mix bus with EQs, I try to do 2 dB increments or less. Uh, and then a little bit of a shelf boost here for a little bit of a air lift. Um, so it'll be something like that. That's a good starting point, real gentle, but I'll have to adjust from there. And then I typically, I'll sometimes reach for a stereo widener. So I'm going to grab my air stereo width, which comes with Pro Tools. And I typically will go around 150%. So 50% wider than what you typically get. And that usually makes the mix a little bit louder. So I turn the um, overall trim down half a dB or so. Uh, and that's a good starting point. And then if you have any kind of saturation plugin or virtual tape plugin, Man, those are great ones here. I really like Greg Wells' Mixcentric. I like Stephen Slate's Virtual Tape Machines. I like Stephen Slate's, um, gosh, what's the uh, Revival? Yes, it's such a great plugin. But uh, I don't have any of those in Pro Tools, so I'm, I'm going to just keep it with that. The final plugin I'll have is some sort of limiter. Um, so let's grab Maxim, which is a free limiter that comes with Pro Tools. Uh, and this is what's going to allow you to do a quick master of your uh, mix and get the level up there. I usually pull the ceiling down a bit. 
like half a db and then um, the threshold again you don't know you're gonna have to pull that down as you go so i will leave that there and pull the threshold down on the actual mix so the, you pull the plugins that you typically reach for that you know nine times out of ten you want to mix through a mix bus compressor if you like the ssl if there's a saturation plugin again like i said um, if you mix through ozone anything like that get it on here because you i know you're going through almost the same kind of settings mix after mix why recreate them every single time you mix and get them set up with the gentle neutral settings that you typically would start with. And then what I do is I inactivate them, okay? So that they're not on and they're not drawing any CPU power, but they're there with the right settings. Okay, next, I wanna create a couple of group tracks, stereo uh, group tracks. And in Pro Tools, these are aux inputs. These might be stereo buses for you. I'm gonna create one, two, uh, three, four, for for now and depending on what kind of music you make um, it'll be different I'm going to show you what I'm going to use these for for so I'm going to create one for drums I typically like to route all of my drum tracks through a drum bus okay and I'm going to solo safe this in Pro Tools by clicking command and then clicking it which means if I route drum tracks to this bus they'll automatically route through to the master fader. Even if I solo one of those, it won't mute this track. You never want this track to mute. So I've got a drum bus here, and I typically like a certain EQ curve on that. I typically do kind of similar to the mix bus, do a little bit of a high pass. Again, nothing too high, because you don't want to roll off a lot of the kick drum, just a little bit. But I'll take out 400, by about 3 dB, do a little bit of a lift, from 7 or 8K, uh, usually 1.5 dB. And then I like a little bit of compression. And I'll just probably leave it at 3 to 1, and I'll just bring up the threshold a bit. Or you know what, you could go with the preset if you find one you really like. Um, drums, compression, they've got a slower attack, which I like to let the transits come through, a little bit faster release, which I like. The four to one ratio, kind of hard. Um, maybe I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep it four to one. They had four and a half to one. I'm going to take the, the makeup gain down because they have no idea what that is. I'm going to bring the threshold up because I really only want to kiss the drums just a little bit. But we'll have to adjust that on the actual drums. And if you follow any of my teaching, you know why I'm doing this. If I can do a little bit of processing on the master fader, that'll affect all the drums and tracks and enhance them a bit. If I do a little bit more processing on the drum bus, that'll enhance the drums. And now I don't need to do hardly anything on the drums. So those are in place, which I really like. I've also got a P drums track for parallel drums. Okay. And with this, I typically grab something super aggressive like... Um, well, that's the Waves one. We've got one in Pro Tools, um, BF76. This is a really aggressive compressor, really fast, I should say. Um, and so I'll do as slow of an attack, as fast of a release as we can. I'll do a 20 to 1 ratio, or you do the shift click, and it's the all buttons in approach, which is just squashes your drums. And we'll put the input pretty high and the output down. So this is gonna just destroy our drums. We'll keep the volume down. And what I'm gonna do in a real mix is send a copy of kick, snare, and toms into this track and just obliterate them and blend them to taste. So I'll keep this fader down a little bit. That'll give me some really aggressive weight and smack and punch on the drum. So it's a trick I use all the time. So if you use it, you might as well bake it into your template. All right, so those are there. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change their color and just make them a no color option. And then we've got verb i'm going to do a reverb here again if there's a reverb you really like i've got one i like here that comes inside of pro tools i like the air reverb and i like the drum room preset really really cool preset uh, i leave it as is but i do filter it a little bit with an eq um, to roll off some top end actually and roll off some low end okay 
Uh, so that'll be a great reverb I can send things to. It's just there, and so I can quickly grab a send on a snare drum or the guitar or the vocal and get a little bit of a nice room sound. And finally, I like delays. And I'll use a different delay for each track. So I might have a long delay and a short slap delay. So you could add two delays into your template. Let's grab uh, the dynamic delay is really cool. Um, and I'll just leave it on default. I'll put the mix 100%. Um, and I'll do a high cut all the way down to, I like to roll off a lot of my highs on delay so they're not as um, bright and forward. So I'm kind of EQing that, and that'll be a good starting point. And if you really wanted to go crazy, you could do like a short slap delay, which I tend to find very useful um, when I'm doing mixes. So I've got a drum group, but that that kind of gives you an idea that, hey, you could have a vocals group. If you tend to put something on vocals, if you tend to put something on guitars, let's say, you can create all the groups you want and go ahead and put those plugins on. I don't always use groups. It depends on the song. Um, but drums, 99 times out of 100, I do. So I go ahead and include this and the parallel drums as an option. The master fader plugins are the most critical for me and then a reverb and a delay. So at this point, you can you know make whatever you want if you like you know, a, a parallel snare track, a parallel, you know, vocal track. If you do anything like that, go ahead and get it that you know you always want. Go ahead and get it in place uh, and you're re really good to go. If you're unsure, unready to use these plugins, much like the Master Fader, you can go ahead and make them disabled so that when you pull in actual tracks, you're not hearing any effects yet. You're just getting a balance and then you can quickly turn them on. How do you implement this into your actual sessions? It depends on which DAW you're using. There's a couple of options. For example, in Pro Tools, I could open up a track that already has all the song, you know, the, the audio tracks in it in the song, and I can import this data onto that mix. There is a feature, so I would open the real song, and I would go to Import Session Data. So I wouldn't do it from this song, but I'd open up the song I'm mixing, choose Import Session Data, and I would navigate to my mix template Pro Tools file and click open. And it's gonna say, well, yeah, I can't actually do that because I'm already using it in place. But if I'm on the other song and I import the session data from my mix template, I can select these five tracks and it'll import them into my session. That's a great way to do it in Pro Tools. The other way to do it is to take your mix template session, open it up and import the audio into this. Okay, it's the reverse of what I just showed you. Import all your 40 tracks, 24 tracks, if you follow my 24 track rule, you know, import all your tracks into this session and then file save as or save copy in, you know? And so now you're doing a copy of this somewhere else with the name of your song. Okay, that's all we're doing. This is like a any kind of template you'd have. If you had a Word document template and you wanted to tweak it out and then save it as another name, that's what you're doing is you're importing the audio, saving it as another name so you're not overriding your template here. But you already have the plugins, the routing, and the plugin settings in place so that when you go to mix, you don't have to think. You just pull up your faders, get your balance, and then when it's time to add mix bus processing, you just, boom, turn these on, and you start to tweak the settings from where they generally are as a good starting point and make sure that they're helping, not hurting. And if you might not even need all of them. I say, I don't need any stereo width on this mix. Turn it off. You know, I don't need any EQ on this mix. Turn it off. At least it's there. You save brain power. You save time. And guess what? Now you're getting those consistent mixes with your consistent compression settings, your consistent EQ settings, your consistent saturation settings, your consistent reverbs and delays that are overall your go-tos. Can you grab more reverbs and delays? Totally. Can you bring in something crazy and wild? Totally. But think about the time you're saving and more importantly than the time, the mental brain space you're saving, not having to think about, oh, I gotta get a delay in here. Oh, it's probably gonna be a quarter note delay probably going to be a little bit muffled. It's the same thing. Nine times out of 10, it's the same thing. So save the brain space so you can be creative, you can be innovative, and you can make smart, balanced decisions. That's what a mixed template is, and that's how you set it up. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. I, I want you to actually go do this. If you haven't already, I want you to, A, leave a comment below and let me know 
Do you already use mixed templates? If so, please let us know your experience with them and tell everyone else in the community how awesome they are and how they help you. Give us specifics. It'll encourage the rest of us. If you don't use mixed templates, and this is like a, whoa, what a good idea, I should probably do this, or A, I've heard about this a million times, but now I'm gonna finally do it, let me know in the comment below that you've actually done it. So go open up your DAW, Logic Studio One, Cubase, FL Studio, Reaper, whatever you use, open it up, create your own template, and then come back and report that you've done it. Will this be your most perfect template? No. Will this template evolve over time? Totally, but do it once and use it from now on for the next 10 mixes you do, right? If you just do one every once in a while or the next couple of albums you do and see if it helps. See if it doesn't speed things up. See if it doesn't allow you to stay in the creative mind space more often and churn out more consistent mixes. And then of course you can evolve your template as you go. So leave me those comments below. And I wanna leave you with something before you go as well to help your mixes sound even better once you use your mix template. And it's my six steps to a radio ready song guide. If you haven't downloaded it, this is your day. It is a simple, easy to read PDF. Mixing is one of those six steps. Mixing templates help you in that process. But in this guide, I kind of give you a step-by-step -step process for taking your song ideas from just an idea to a finished master that you're releasing on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you distribute your music to help you make it sound its absolute best. And there's a bunch of tips in there. There's a bunch of best practices. This is basically my deconstruction of how every major song has ever been produced. They all go through these six steps. And so I want you to be doing the same thing for your songs. If you wanna be a big boy, big girl, produce radio ready music. Don't just throw some tracks up together, play around with them and then export it and hope it sounds good. Have a process, have a plan. Make sure you don't skip any of these six steps because each one is crucial. I outline it all for you for free in my six steps to a radio ready song guide. You can download it right below this video or, or click the link in the description. It's radioreadyguide.com. Just go to radioreadyguide.com, grab your download, read it, implement it. This plus having a mixing template, it's gonna make your life so much easier and your songs so much better sounding and more consistent. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It means a ton. And I'll see you on another video real soon.